Yo, what the fuck is going on? Whoop! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> fuck you, Curry! Bitch ass nigga! But, um, wow. Uh, it was such a bad game, and this game they could have won it. Uh, fuck, we might have to see another fucking repeat. But, um, what is going on, guys? It's your boy, uh, KRAT7435. We back at it once again with another good fucking NBA playoffs, uh, recap, or basically what we're gonna see in these playoffs. And I'm sorry that I wasn't able to get back into this, uh, because I was pretty busy myself. But, I still am, you know, like, I got two more days left before, um, my, uh, whatchamacallit, oh, fuck, uh, before my shift at work, because I start at 6, and I get out maybe closing, or 11 o'clock, but, uh, yeah, let's get right into it, um, you know, obviously my bowl's fucking lost, so they fucking trash, but, let's talk about Toronto versus Cleveland, that was a fucking sweep. DeMar DeRozan, you trash as fuck! And you're not that good, and you're fucking boo-boos. Yeah, yeah, you got boo-boos. You got the boos inside of your boo-boos. I ain't talking them titties, but, uh, bruh, like, alright, no funny shit, but I ain't gay. But, uh, <laughs> hey man, it don't even matter how you roll nowadays, you know, like, this is your home court, and when you got that home court advantage, like, that's how relationships get a little bit better now. This is this is like the finals, man. Because I ain't talking about no, you know, final dating session. <laughs> you know, like, uh, real shit. But, you know, look at that shit. Look at that block of cheese. Look, look at that fucking trophy, bro. Yo, why do they make these trophies so fucking large? Like, you can literally hurt somebody with that. But, um, now nah, let's get right into it. Let's talk about how this, how this shit really went down within the past couple of weeks. Uh, who do I think should have won in this second round before the third round began? I think Houston could have beat out uh, San Antonio, but then again, Harden, he was fucking trash. He, dude, that nigga Harden, bro. bro. Bro, if I could just review every trash player you know, out of this playoffs, it was definitely fucking Harden and then fucking DeMar DeRozan and then fucking John Wall. John Wall, wait, wait, bruh, you gotta go to Chicago, or you gotta fucking just go somewhere, because I don't know how to say this, it's like, like, you know, my Bulls could literally make it to the fucking finals, but we don't have any sense of mind to pick up any star player, except just basically let everybody shit, and let everybody get treated like a, you know, pigs inside like a fucking cog, or become cogs inside the machine, and then whoever goes to whatever team, you know, is, you know, highly favorited within, like, the whole season. Because it's not a guarantee you may win these finals, but if you're with, like, the right team, you might be able to make it to the finals without even trying. So, to put this into proper perspective, we don't really know why that these teams are being, how should I say it, they're being treated as if they're that good, and they're actually coming out with a lot, of, with a lot more talent. But, I will credit to say that Boston has done their job, and Boston has taken it to the higher routes, you know, higher than expected, because I really thought Boston was going to get that ass whooped in Game 7. Let's take a good look at that, because that was a really good fucking game. Yo, fucking Isaiah Thomas, man, even though that I don't really like him, well, no, no, because I like him in real life, but I just don't like the Celtics, that's all. But, um, no, he's a really good player, man, and... I think personally, you know, after the whole, you know, his sister dying and shit, I think it would be good enough for him to actually, like, like, uh, oh shit, to actually, you know, win this chip and actually prove to the NBA that, you know, height doesn't matter because, you know, when you really think about it, man, it's like, you know, this is, this is like the true, like, this is like the true playoffs that we're seeing now, you know, like Isaiah Thomas, like, look at, look at where Isaiah Thomas was one year, one fucking year ago, this nigga wasn't doing shit, and then, you know, Boston got their asses whooped by Cleveland, so, you know, we don't, like, we don't really know how this would go down, but if, like, like, basically, put it like this, you know, if uh, LeBron James can actually take down Boston in game one, 
then that would be a problem for Isaiah Thomas. But then again, it's in Boston, two games, 2-2, two, 1-1-1. Two, one, one, one. But we need to understand that it, that this is going to be a really tough, you know, box scoring. Because, you know, just by looking at these numbers, like Otto Porter Jr., 20 points. Markeith Morris, 18. But, you know, when we look at, you know, you know, like the Boston Celtics points, you know, differentials, you know, we know who's actually pulling up. Jai Crowder, Horford, Isaiah Thomas, Kelly Olenek, unfortunately, which that nigga dropped 26 and 10. Oh, no, 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 not 26 and 10. What the fuck? Um, he actually dropped 26 and 4. So he actually got 26 4 4. Oh, and dude, that motherfucker, Isaiah, he, yo, this nigga, yo. Well, yeah, because I'm really sorry that I actually talk all that shit to Isaiah because I really thought, you know, that nigga was going to get fucked up, you know, within, like, the whole first round. But, you know, like, I give him credit for actually doing his best because, you know, like, the Celtics, they are actually, you know, like, a lot better when they actually play together. And, I mean, it's really good because Avery Bradley is actually having his moment where this nigga has been really, you know, yeah, he's been, oh, wow, he's been fucking up, like, a lot. And... He's the most loyal player you could actually say out of your team because when you really look at him, you know, looking at like basically looking at where he is, you know, he's he's not he's really not that old. Like he's only like 26 years old, and dude, this motherfucker's just dropping. Dude, he's banging threes on niggas that are taller than him. So, <coughs> um, like, because I'm really happy that he's really putting in that work, and I think he's kind of playing like the role of like a Dwayne Wade ish where he. He can be there whenever he's there, but more so, he had he has speed, and that's really what he has. And it's not just about the speed; it's it's his caliber, and his caliber is to actually keep going, you know, regardless of who's winning or who's you know losing. But what I like about Boston this year, and this is really interesting, is that Boston, uh, like they've been you know doing oh wow they've been putting in putting in like a lot more work. To say that you know that uh, that uh, they want to win, and I think that with Cleveland, especially with Kyrie Irving, like that's a big matchup for Isaiah. But Isaiah needs to know if I want to beat this nigga's ass, then I need to fucking play defense on him. You cannot let this team get get buckets on you. You cannot let them get any further than 50 points. I probably say, but it's like. You know, that's basically like the true, you know, nature of what this whole playoff series like is gonna be. Because when you really look at it, like, you know, let's just go into game four. Because obviously game four had to be, you know, LeBron James's best games or if not, probably one of the more decent ones. But um you know, when you see this shit, you know, this nigga is dropping dimes. Like he he is going to have a easy matchup against Jai Crowder if Jai does not play defense. So, let's take a look at it. 35 points, 9 rebounds, and 6 assists, and obviously he turns over the fucking ball. But he gets a ball, but he gets a block. A block, block, block. A block. <laughs> but, um, Kevin Love, oh wow, that's pretty sad. Um, okay. So, technically the main leading scorers of this team is Kyrie Irving and fucking LeBron. And obviously Corver because he's you know do that yo because if you guys don't play defense up against Corver because I'm pretty sure most likely Avery Bradley would have to defend his ass if that has to be the case, but if not if J.R. Smith is in there, I would put oh shit oh uh, I would probably put maybe a Jail Green on him or still put Bradley on him and just have Kyrie be guarded by um, Isaiah Thomas so. You know, you know, like it's just really weird because it's like you know we have we have a lot of good talent in order to 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 have a good series, but it's like who who would who would who would who would you be seeing dropping more than probably forty points throughout this whole series? And I would probably have to say it has to be fucking like you know uh, LeBron James because you know LeBron James you know as much as I hate him. But, you know, the guy's actually doing what he has to do. And I think it's... Because I think it's safe to say that, you know, if he's not putting up as much as... I want to say probably less than 20 points. If he's if he's scoring less than 20 points, then Cleveland's going to lose these, lose these playoffs. Or Kevin Love, J.R. Smith, um, Shannon Fry, Shumpert, or Irving, 
maybe Thompson here and there could actually make a miracle comeback and just basically beat Boston, you know, through a lucky comeback, and they're just basically playing better without, you know, fucking uh, LeBron James. And I think I, like, because I wouldn't be surprised because, you know, LeBron has been really focusing on his game as a much higher-end professional, but it's more difficult to say that because, you know, we don't know how much caliber that Cleveland can can carry because it's like hey like hey like put it like this you know if cleveland is actually going to start losing games up against like the warriors then i would be a lot more happier to see that than in the boston versus cleveland series but if boston beats cleveland's ass which i think they could um like because isaiah like you know he's just gonna have like a lot of height differential up against you know lebron but i only say that is because uh, you know lebron has a bigger he has a bigger body and he has a much more higher capacity to get to get your to get you like within a position of not making any buckets you're having trouble going to the line and you know lebron he could just easily take advantage of that and just go straight to the rim and which i i, I do kind of hate that because the referees try to bullshit you know everything towards you and then lebron he's getting all these fucking freebies and all this stupid fucking bullshit and i just really think like dude you know yes i understand that you know lebron wants to win but it's not fair enough to say that the one team does not get enough playoffs and or uh fouls and then the other team does so let's go back into into these playoff brackets um Let's just talk about the Warriors and Spurs. Uh, let's just talk about Game 2, man, because Game 2 was a fucking living massacre. Like, how do you fucking lose by 36 points? But then again, like, I understand Kawhi Leonard is the main... He is at the main, like, cornerstone of their team. So, technically, Manu has to go fucking... Ugh, dude, he has to go beast mode and take at least one game. And then, it, and then if Kawhi comes back that game... He can just wipe them out just like that. But, hey, you know what? Like, I'm not mad at them because, you know, put it like this, bro. You know, Kawhi Leonard has been has been doing his fucking thing. And, you know, like, it's just really weird how, how much, you know, bad luck every team can get. But it's like, you know, don't we see that from the very start of uh, the season? So, you know, this, this, is, this is why you got all these bitch asses trying to tell tell everybody yeah he can't guard me oh no but i could guard him when clearly niggas is actually guarding you better than for what you can do but um let's get right into it obviously jonathan simmons he's doing a really good job by the way which i think that you know in game one he he could actually brought that whole team back but you know like it's just really hard dude it's hard because manu he can't really do it all uh patty he's he's doing decent but green he he's he wasn't he wasn't banging anything so you know uh like basically when you look at it uh you don't really have too much to do per se because you only have you know lamarcus and paul becoming your two giant you know defending points but then manu he he probably would have to play more small forward when clearly you know Kawhi he's supposed to come in there so technically you know we don't really have any you know good small forwards to put up but but if anything jonathan simmons he could he could really do that you know what i'm saying like you know nigga paid 150 bucks just to just get just to get all here to the to the to to this to this point of his career so hey like hey like if anything if san antonio can be favorited in these playoffs um for their you know hopefully not their last two games ever because if because if gsw takes one more game then it's over because you know they would have to be very smart and very um, careful with their fouls. But let's take a look at these stats. Kevin Durant, 16 points. You a bitch. Oh wow, nigga, you were you were shooting 40 percent at the three point line. You are ugly. 60 percent for field goals. Ugly. Oh jeez, you better go back to the fucking. Oh, you got to go back to the daycare center. You are ugh, terrible. Curry, 29 points. JaVale LaBitch, uh, 6. Uh, Clay Pie? Okay, you had 11. Who cares? But, um, Draymond, 13. Um, let's see. McCaw, 18, which I think he's a pretty good player. Um, I just don't understand why that he's just not getting enough minutes. But, um, 
Yeah, you know, like it's look like it's looking pretty good, but you never know with Ada Durant. He might he might shake up a little bit. But um other than that, I think it's really good enough to say that this team could really beat out San Antonio and take advantage of it. But um if we wanna get real on who's actually gonna take the higher end stakes, um I would wanna say San Antonio. If Kawhi Leonard comes back. If he doesn't come back, then it's completely over and we can't really be seeing what we wanna say. But, um, yeah, let's go back to the main one, to the main page, and uh, I will give out my final predictions. So, if GSW beats uh, San Antonio, then I would like to see Cleveland get inside to the finals, and if I were to see this in into the prediction of where I see this series going, then I would say probably GSW in seven, just because Kevin Durant really needs to leak out more and... He wants to have this title so he can finally shut up all the fucking haters and then I don't know if that bitch will ever probably stay at GSW. He most likely would if he's getting paid higher after the finals. But um you know, if he does uh do that then that would basically debunk everything out of, you know, what LeBron gets every time he goes to the finals and <laughs> obviously LeBron he is probably lost more in the finals and won more but I mean it's good enough to say that LeBron if he does win this ring this would be the second consecutive for Cleveland back to back but um let's just put it into that instance if Cleveland were to beat GSW in seven uh Durant's gonna be a bitch he's gonna probably want to switch to another crappy team or probably stay at GSW to try to beat LeBron's ass um, it would be probably a bigger problem in free agency because he would probably be like, hmm, maybe I should go back to, to that OKC, uh, like, you know, like, I was just basically bitching around with them. But, um, no, that would be pretty funny if Harden and Durant went back to OKC. That would, you know, that would be, <laughs> bro, this is why that, that, that those two fucked up with the whole fucking NBA, bro. But no, it would be a really good, you know, really good twist to that. But if Boston takes down Cleveland and they meet GSW in the finals, um, I would like to see Boston take it in six because I think Boston is a lot better than GSW. But I wouldn't mind seven. It's a lot more better in seven. Um, let's just say if SAS took down GSW and faced Cleveland, I'd probably say SAS in five because... If Kawhi comes back a lot healthier and he could just manage to run better, oh yeah, he's oh yeah yeah that nigga that nigga's like lifting off in passion. But um, if it was the other way around with Boston, um, it's good, but I think Boston's gonna get their asses fucked because like I said, Kawhi Leonard he he's just dude he's fucking ferocious dude, and that's basically the fucking Tim Duncan of that team. So. When you really look at it, he has like what, like a seven foot four wingspan or something like that, and he's just he's just monstrous, dude. Like you can't you can't run away from good facts. And I think that with that being said, like you know that is a true coherence of basketball. That's in our fucking American blood. This is how we do it. Europe, you can't fucking beat us. No, just kidding. But um, I'm actually gonna do a video about that. I'm gonna talk about British basketball. Um, like coming on the rise or basically, you know, like I'm going to go on to like a whole rant about it. But, um, yeah, guys, uh, that's my predictions. Um, uh, I would really like to see Boston beat the living shit out of Cleveland. I would like to have SAS make a comeback, but I think it's most likely GSW going to take the lead. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hope you guys enjoy it. Big F you to Curry, but, uh, yeah, nigga. Uh, hope you guys, uh, you know, can have fun watching this playoff game tonight. Um, I won't be able to watch it because I got work. But um, when I come back, I will make a whole good video about it. And I'll chat with you guys soon. All right, peace.